Happy Friday. Welcome back to another five weekly favorites. Uh, we want to talk about two things from the week. So this was our birthday week. We went to Solvang for a little staycation. Yeah, it was so fun. Wait, what were our two things? Oh, the Lansby and the Yeah, so the Lansby is where we stayed. If you've ever been to Solvang, it's a little like Danish town in California. Um, it's only about two hours north of LA, which is so crazy. We were saying like we go to San Diego all the time because we have like, friends and family there mm -hmm. and um, it's about the same distance mile wise, but like San Diego is similar to LA. But when you go there, like once you go north, I feel like it just gets so different in like how it looks and it just reminds you how like beautiful California is and how yeah. like vast and unique all the different areas are. So it's, it's so crazy. Specifically, it's about 30 miles, I think east from Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. So to get to Santa Barbara is like really easy for us. We just take the 101 quick zip up north. Um, and then you take like this, the 154 going east. So that's a little bit windier, but anyway, uh, it was raining on Monday when we left, and so it was a little, the drive was a little dicey, but it was worth it when we got there. We stayed at the Lansby. It's really the only, like, hotel. I think there's maybe some, like, inns. Inns, yeah. In Solvang, but it's Or really, there was a hotel. Wasn't there a hotel connected to the place we had lunch? Oh, you're right. So, but there is maybe a few others, but the Lansby is, like, the nicest, most, like, updated one, mm -hmm. and it's so cute there, and we love it. Our room was, so they were doing construction in the lobby, and the elevator was, like, out of commission, so I think all the rooms were on the ground floor because no one could take the elevator and so ours was on the ground floor like right by a patio and we couldn't use the patio at least when we arrived because it was raining but it was so nice yeah we sat on our patio in the next morning but yeah it was so nice but I had been there before I had never been and I just thought I thought solving was going to be a little more like mix of modern and old but it really is like old-timey Danish town like yeah super authentic it seems like we have never been to Copenhagen, but like mm -hmm. Copenhagen Danish feel. And then um, the only like modern building really was the Lansby. Yeah, and it's beautiful, but it's funny because I wonder if that's going to be a trend or like if it is just gonna remain kind of like one of the only places. But yeah, we love the Lansby. And we even, we had like a glass of wine in their hotel bar mm -hmm. with some and French fries. So even if you're not staying there, definitely recommend their hotel like bar restaurant area because it's really cute. Um, and then our other favorite, or what well, weekly favorite, we had yeah. something like, we were only there for like a day and a half, but, yeah. um, well, really like 24 hours, huh? Yeah, we left kind of later than we expected on Monday. Because of the rain. Because yeah. of the rain. And it took a little bit longer to get there because of the rain. Um, but we tried to fit as much in as possible, and then yeah. we came back Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. So our other favorite thing was on Monday. Also, we decided, Britta had bought... Um, like a deal on Travel Zoo. Yeah. Which we recommend doing this deal because apparently it was like way better of a deal than even the Yeah, it was two even for one. cheaper than the two for one that they offer like through the Lansby. Yeah, so it was a wine tasting at Brick Barn mm -hmm. Winery. We think our friend Dustin had recommended it. He did. It. Yeah, yeah. We brought it down from someone. Yeah. Like, we think it was Dustin. Um, but it was such a good recommendation because we loved it. We got there like an hour and 15 minutes before they closed mm -hmm. on a rainy Monday. If you can only imagine a rainy yeah. Monday in like the middle of like wine country, there was no one there. There was like one other person. Yeah. And so we just like sat in this corner by ourselves. It was super cozy. The girl working was literally so nice. Yeah. She kept coming up to us and giving us the different tastings and explaining. And then we decided to buy a bottle because we never do this. We like never spend money. Yeah. But I was like, why don't we buy the peanut? We love the Pinot Noir. It really tasted like strawberries and cinnamon, yeah. but in like a non-sweet way. Yeah. We were really impressed. Um, and then like we can open it and drink it when something like really good this year happens because we always say we love that our birthday is in January because it sets up the rest of the year. And I actually saw Kristen Cavallari say this recently too. Her, she's a Capricorn, so her birthday is even earlier in January, mm -hmm. but that she had always like associated like her year with the year and we always do that too. Yeah. So I thought it was like perfect set to the year. Like, oh, let's buy this now on our birthday. And then like, we hope some like big exciting things will happen it this will. year. And we'll be like, oh, let's open that bottle of wine. So yeah, maybe starting a tradition there. That place was awesome to highly recommend. You were also going to do like, we took some video for a little reel. So we'll put that together and try to like tag Sorry, as many in the table. <laughs> It is too close to Terry's head. Tag as many places as we can, like, in the caption so you guys know, like, the spots we recommend. We also are on the Out of Office app. That's how we keep track of, like, all of our trips. So I could make that trip public, I believe. I don't know how the app works. Yeah, I'm I'm I have to look it. more into it. But 
yeah. it's kind of hard to use like um from a social standpoint Okay, and then my beauty favorite this week was the Essence Curl Fixing Lash Base. I saw this arrive on Ulta. It was only $5, and I had to order sunscreen. And so I was like, oh, I'll get this to like get free shipping because I was intrigued. It basically said that it was a product that you curl your lashes with like a curler and then put this on and it like affixes your lashes curled. So it's kind of how I thought of it. It was kind of like a lash primer, but I feel like a lash primer is mainly to help with like flaking and this helps hold the curl. And especially I've been using like the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. And if you tried that, it's super thick and dry and heavy. And I feel like it just weighs down my lashes. So I've been using this and I love the wand. It's so, hopefully you can see this. It's super, super small. It's nylon bristles. It's curved. And honestly, this kind of reminds me of like an eyelash glue, but for your lashes, it doesn't feel sticky like a glue per se, like a little sticky, I guess, but it just like cements them in place. And I try not to go like to that very base because my eyes get irritated really easily, but I just put on like a light layer of this before mascara and it's worked so well at curling, keeping a curl in my lashes. I do think it's super hard to remove because I actually, Carly told me that new e.l.f. mascara was a chewing mascara and I had issues removing it and I think it's because I've been wearing this under it. So it is like a glue essentially. So just keep that in mind if that's not something you're into, like it's not easy to get off. But if you have straight lashes that tend to curl down, this will definitely help keep them curled. I've really been loving it. Okay, Britta told me to get this. It's the Nature Lab 2-in-1 Scalp Scrub and Clarifying Shampoo because... Did we get this in PR? Yeah. We got it in PR a while ago. Britta used the whole thing. She is better about trying new hair stuff. But my scalp has been like so itchy and dry and I just needed a scalp scrub. And then when I went to go research, this one seemed to get the best reviews in like the drugstore kind of category. I know people really love the Goop one, but that one is like $50. So yeah, I picked up the Nature Lab one. It got rave reviews, and it really is so good. I feel yeah. like the um, like scrub particles in here are a good size. They're not too big, but they are abrasive enough. I at first I felt like there was a learning curve. Like I had to figure out how to like get in there and really scrub. But I feel like the clarifying shampoo aspect of this does work too. Yeah. Like I felt like my scalp does feel so much cleaner. My hair just feels better, and something about this makes my hair shinier too. Um, I've just been really impressed and it smells good, but it's a low scent level in my opinion, which is what I like. Like I don't like fragrance things and I feel like this product is so good and more people shock about it. But like I said, when I was researching, it by far had the best reviews out of any scalp scrub I saw. Yeah, it's amazing. I just went through it really quick. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then last up is Dr. Death season two. I was trying to see what the main actors, okay, this isn't the right one, name is. Edgar Ramirez, so he plays Paolo Macchiarini, and then Mandy Moore plays Benita Alexander, and then some other honorable mentions in this cast are um, Ashley, how do you say her last name, Matikyu, you guys know who she is, she was, she's in, she was in Revenge, she's a really good actress, I feel like she's been popping up a lot, and then Luke Kirby, who played um, Lenny, Bruce. Lenny Bruce, he plays Dr. Gamelli. So if you're unfamiliar with Dr. Death, we love season one. We listened to the podcast. We never listened to the second season of the podcast though. No. Only the first season. Yeah. So I didn't And know I didn't what, even watch the show before I watched it. Yeah. I didn't know what the, this season was about. Um, but basically Dr. Macchiarini, I think is how you say it. He comes up with this technology to use synthetic tracheas um, so that patients don't have to wait for a, like a trachea donor because obviously that's not something like you come across every day. Um, and so he comes up with this like crazy technology where they make the trachea out of plastic and then they spin it in the patient's stem cells to try to get it like coated in their stem cells. Honestly, it sounds crazy to me, and I know, and the sad part is I know that so many people, like the patients, were just desperate. Like, they basically, um, at the most of the patients he operated on were, I forget the term that he used, but basically they could only operate on terminal patients. So these people essentially, like, knew they were going to die, and this was like a last-ditch effort to see if they could get, um the trachea transplant and have it work for them and continue to live like a healthy life uh, but I, I don't want to give too much away but it was just insane just like season one like it's just crazy 
that like the loopholes that this doctor found to basically basically like bring this technology to life like there just needs to be maybe more of like an effort um and testing wise before they like t do these types of surgeries on real humans but anyway watch it it was so good i was so impressed with mandy moore I feel like we haven't seen her in like kind of more of a serious role. Like obviously in This what? Is Us. This Is Us is like an entirely serious role. Serious role, but like in a different way. She kind of played like the matriarchy and was very like, like a calming presence. And in this role, she plays a journalist producer for like, she's like an award-winning journalist living in New York City. And she interviews Paolo for a piece they're doing and they develop a relationship. And so just to see her in like this like powerful women role was so great. Like I loved everything about her role. Um, and then they, they kind of like flashback because he operated in Europe and then you see him in New York City with her because obviously they start a relationship. So I don't want to give too much away, but watch it. It was really, really good. Um, it all, it's like, just like the first season, it left me feeling a little bit sad because obviously these are real people. This is like a real story, but it was enlightening and I do recommend it. Okay. Hope you guys had a great week and we'll see you next week.